Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, we got at least one person here. Let's see here. We'll wait. I'm gonna wait a few minutes, let everybody kind of gather. <clears throat> Good after uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Higher Things Bible Study. I am Pastor Aaron Finker again. Uh, I am the Dean of Theology for Higher Things. Pinch hitting for Pastor Borkhart, who is getting ready for virtual conference things, and those things kick off tomorrow. Uh, so please. Uh, Check that out. Check out uh, the higher, higherthings.org to look up how to get registered for that if you haven't, or how to gain information uh, about it. Um, how to register. Hold on, there's a gnat in here. That's going to be great during Bible class. Messenger of Satan, as Paul would say, right? In what is that? Second Corinthians. Anyway, uh, virtual conference stuff. I'm going to get that gnat before the Bible study is over. We're going to see how that goes. Um, Great, just what I need. Um, where was I? Virtual conference. Um, so check that out. Lots of great content. Uh, plenaries, breakaways tomorrow evening, uh, tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock central, I believe it is. There's a panel discussion. I'll be on it, on that panel. Pastor Borkhardt will be on that panel answering all sorts of questions. The, the questions got updated today. I've seen the updated ones. Uh, we're kind of getting put through our paces. So it's going to be, um, yeah, that panel discussion will be interesting, to say the least. The questions were a little bit more softball-like uh, before, before today, and now it's now it's fast pitch. Uh, maybe even baseball. We, we've upped our, we'll have to up our game. So um, see how we do on those questions. Uh, that's at 4 o'clock tomorrow, I know that. And then worship, uh, all sorts of stuff will be in the app and the website. I think in the app. I don't know, maybe maybe Sandra uh, Madden, our content executive, will be here to, to kind of steer me correctly on that info. Uh, but definitely on the website. Um, worship, plenaries, breakaways, that uh, panel discussion I told you about. Um Maybe even a couple live breakaways. I can't remember. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, so excited, gospely content for you, just like this Bible study hopefully is. Again, it's an interactive Bible study. I do my best. If you ask a question, I do my best to, to catch it in the comments and answer it. Um, if there happens to be another pastor in the room or somebody else, offer that up. Uh, we can help each other. And... Um, I'll do my best to remember all that I'm supposed to like remember and talk about. So we are actually uh, in the next chapter of Genesis, Genesis chapter 28, and we left it off. Um, Rebecca had a plan, wanted Jacob to get the blessing, plan worked out. Um, then Esau upset at Jacob for stealing it, wants to kill him. It's okay, Rebecca has a plan, always has a plan. And then she uh, is going to send uh, Jacob away. So she talks to Isaac and says, you know, we don't want Jacob marrying one of these Hittite women, do we? Because things will be even worse. Because uh, my why should I even live anymore if there's going to be more daughters-in-law running around like this? So that's getting us going today. Uh, 
Oh, so close. I'm going to get that nat before the end. So, just hopefully, you know, if I start clapping randomly, don't freak out. Just inform the newcomers. Although I'll keep talking about it. That nat. Oh, man. The only thing that would be worse if there was suddenly a spider crawling on the wall. I've had that happen before. Anyway, to the text. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and commanded him and said to him, Do not take a wife uh, from the daughters of Canaan or the Canaanite women. So, so, so another blessing. So much for there not being another blessing. There's always more blessing with the Lord. Um, here we'll talk about what, what this blessing says and why it's given here in a minute, but I don't want to don't want to steal my thunder here. And he continues, Arise, go to Paddan Aram, to the house of uh, Bethuel, the father of your mother's father, and take for yourself from there a wife, from the daughters of Laban, the brother of your mother. El Shaddai uh, bless you, and... Uh, make you fruitful and multiply you and may you become uh, a congregation of peoples uh, may he give to you the blessing of abraham uh, to you and to your seed with you uh, to possess the land of your sojournings which god gave to Abraham. Okay, so this is the blessing he gives. And this blessing, um, always more blessing with the Lord El Shaddai, God Almighty. Um, be, and this blessing is given to uh, comfort Jacob. Uh, the Lord always does this. Always more comfort from the Lord for you and for me. Um uh, this is why there's many in various ways the Lord delivers his gifts to you and to me. So it's not just a spoken promise, though he does that, uh, though he does that much. You know, not just the scriptures, not just preaching of the gospel, not just... Oh, I'm going to get it. Not just preaching of the gospel, but baptism too. That gnat's going to drive me crazy. Um, boy, this is going to be an exciting Bible study today. Not going to get through a chapter. Ugh. Anyway, um, not just baptism or the supper. Many and various gifts so that you would be comforted with the gospel. Um, so that you would believe the gospel. That you would be saved and comforted in the midst of your sins, in the midst of, of a world that's falling apart, in the midst of even your death. The Lord does it again and again and again and again. And how much more for Jacob? How much more does Jacob need this blessing? The, the, the second round blessing. Because he stole the first one. But the Lord's word does what it says. And if Jacob were to think, like, you're being sent away, um, you know, because we don't want you around, even though he knows his mother's plan. But I mean, come on, your dad's like, you know, just go, get out of here basically, you'd be like, oh man, well, is this blessing going to count? I took it. Well, the Lord's word does what it says. No, the blessing is yours. And these, these mays, may he give you, that's just, um, it's, um, it's just the way we do blessings. And when the Lord does a blessing, it's going to happen. Um, El Shaddai, and here we get the blessing, not just of Abraham, but of of Eden itself. The blessing given to, to Adam and Eve, the blessing given to Noah, is given now to, um, to Jacob. The Lord make you fruitful and multiply you. Be fruitful and multiply. And may you become a congreg... Will you, and you will become a congregation of peoples. So here, the congregation of peoples here is the first... I believe it's the first time that this is used, um, anticipating uh, the congregation of the people of Israel. Um, and that blessing of Abraham is 
for Isaac and to his seed at with him. Not his, not just his child, many children, as we'll see, but um, also um, the Christ to possess the land of your sojournings, which Yahweh gave to Abraham. Okay, and Isaac sent Jacob, and he journeyed to Paddan Aram to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. Okay, that's pretty much what's going on. Now, here we see oh, we see that that things are there's trouble in paradise. I mean, obviously we knew that Jacob and Esau don't really get along. Um, I think we've got that much, um, but I think there's. Well, here we'll, we'll just read, and then I'll talk about it. Esau saw that Isaac blessed Jacob, and sent him to Padan Aram, to take for himself from there a wife. Um, and that, and as he blessed him, he commanded him, saying, "You shall not take a wife from the daughters." of Canaan, from the Canaanite women, and that Jacob listened to his father and to his mother and went to Paddan Aram. Okay, um, and so Esau, and Esau saw that um, The Canaanite women were the were uh, detestable or or um, evil in the eyes of Isaac, his father. Esau journeyed to Ishmael and took. Um, now this I'll just read the ESV because it's the word order is much different. Um, Esau went to Ishmael and took as his wife, besides the wives he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaioth. So we see here that, that Esau is recognizing that there's some, some distance between he, himself and his parents. And so he's trying to please his parents. Um... He wants to do what, what mom and dad want. Um, I mean, even though he's kind of a, a wild man. I mean, took two wives, lives in the wild. Uh, but here we see the, this trouble of kind of like, I want to measure up. I mean, look at Jacob. He got this blessing and, and he's listening to my parents. I mean, I've lost the birthright. I've lost the blessing. And maybe it's starting to, to come home to roost. There's repentance here. Um and so he um, he takes these two other wives besides the wives that he had. And that's sort of all we know. Uh, we're not told about um, if this fixes the problem. Probably not, as multiple marriages never do in the scriptures. Um, and maybe we'll get there. So what happens? Uh, 28.10 So Jacob left... Uh, Beersheba and journeyed uh, t uh, toward Haran and um, he came upon he encountered came upon a place and he stayed there overnight because the sun was uh, down and he took from a stone from that place and set it up at his head and he um, laid down in that place. Okay, so Jacob's on his way, and he he gets to a spot, and he takes a stone at his his head place, and he's sleeping on that's a terrible pillow. I mean, maybe maybe you like a hard pillow, but um, boy, a, a stone, not a good thing. And oh, he dreams, and behold, there was a ladder. Um, set up on the earth and its head touching the heavens and behold the angels of God ascending and descending 
on it. So um, this here is a vision of um, actually the Lord Jesus. That's what Jesus himself says. Um, he talks to um, Philip in John chapter 1, verse 51. You will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man, uh, which is Jesus. And so this is a vision of Jesus, that he is um, he's the ladder, the hinge between heaven and earth, because he is of heaven and of earth. He is the Son of God, the eternal Son of God. Um, and he is born of the Virgin Mary. And he is both. He is true God, true man. And the angels um, are subject to him. He's the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of the angel armies. And they, they, they come and go at his command. And so that's what Jacob is seeing here. He's seeing a vision of Christ. Um, and behold, Yahweh uh, was standing above it. So here again, this is where we can, like Pastor Borchardt does, and he's right, this Yahweh is Jesus. Jesus claims this for himself, that this is talking about him. And so when it's talking about here, this is Jesus talking with, um, with Jacob. And so he stands above it and he says, I am Yahweh, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. Um, so Jesus is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, the land um, which you are lying on, uh, I will give to you and to your seed. I will or am giving in the process of giving. Um, it happens in the future. Um, and so to your seed, your one seed, um, but yet many, and your, your seed, your one, will be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad, spread out uh, west and east and north and or and north and south, and all families of the earth, and in and will be blessed in you and in your seed. And so. Um, What we want to do here is actually follow more closely uh, the Hebrew grammar. The ESV unites in you and your offspring, but offspring comes at the very end. Your seed comes at the very end of the verse, the very end of the sentence. And so if we want to put it more literally, uh, it would be, um, and they will, and uh, so in you, all, all families of the earth will be blessed and in your seed. And, and I want to do it that way because that and in your seed or in your offspring, singular, that's sort of explaining how it is that in Jacob, this sinful guy who stole his brother's inheritance, who stole his brother's blessing, how is he going to be a blessing? He's a thief. And if we look at that, I mean, he doesn't treat his brother well. What makes you think he's going to treat other people well? Oftentimes how we treat our family is usually better than how we treat those around us. And if he's treating his family that way, he's probably not going to treat other families that well. Anyway, but it's not about Jacob. It's not about him. It, this blessing of all families, all families, none excluded, um, you and me, not excluded, uh, is because of the seed. That blessing is in the seed, in Jesus. So it's in you. That is, this. Uh, what's the technical term? Um, an ex explanatory and. So this and here is trying to explain what is meant by in you. In you, that is, in your seed, all families of the earth will be blessed. In Jesus, we are all blessed. That is, we are all saved. That's the true blessing of God. Sure, we can get first article blessings like i mean jacob got that blessing from isaac you know dew of heaven and all that stuff um but the true blessing of god is his salvation in jesus christ his son in this promised seed that he first made 
uh, in uh, to Adam and Eve, and then to Abraham, and then to Isaac, and now also to Jacob. This seed will come. That's the true source of the blessing. A blessing not just for um, Jacob and the family of Abraham, but for all families of the earth. No one's excluded. Even, I guess, um, all families, even the people of Padan Aram, where Jacob is going. It's all in Jesus. All in this seed. Behold, I am with you and I will keep you uh, where wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until um, I have done what I've said to you which means he's not really he's not really leaving him it sounds like it, but it's the same sort of promise that Jesus makes. Lo, I am with you always, even till the end of the age. Does that mean after the end of the age, Jesus won't be with us? No. Well, rather, we'll be with him. In the same way, um, the Lord is not going to abandon Jacob. Uh, ever. Even in his death. Um, as um, Jesus notes, uh, when it comes to the burning bush passage, the Lord says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not a God of the dead, but of the living. All live to him, even Jacob, right now. Uh, even you and me, right now. Uh, so that's um, the Lord's sort of baptismal promise for us is the same promise he makes uh, to Jacob. To never leave him or forsake him. Um, he He's claimed Jacob as his own, given him his name, and um, as we'll come to see later on, um, gives Jacob a new name, just like we get a new name in the waters of holy baptism. Uh, all that happens to Jacob um, happens to you and me too, uh, because that's the Lord is. He's a he's a one trick pony. He saves he's always saves in the same way, um, being with his people um, through thick and thin, even in their their sins, saving them from their sins, giving them new names claiming them as his own, giving them eternal life. It's all the same. Uh, then Jacob, let's see, wakes up uh, from his sleep and says, surely um, Yahweh is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, uh, what an awesome place this is. This is nothing other except uh, the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So, um, so wherever the Lord is, there is heaven. That's um, the theology of the scriptures. Where God, there heaven. Where heaven, there God. Um, and so... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this this lets us know when it comes to worship, it's the same way. The Lord shows up where two or three are gathered, and there there He brings heaven along with Him, as we say, uh, angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. Right, Son of Man, or ladder uh, with angels ascending and descending on it. So where the Son of Man, there are the angels. Uh, so also uh, the divine service. That's why we we say what we say. Um, Jacob didn't know it, so he calls it. This is the gate of heaven. Um, and Jacob gets up early in the morning and he takes the stone, which was there at his head, and he sets it up as a pillar. And he pours oil uh, on its top, on its head. So he pours, yeah, he pours out an, a, an oil offering on this thing. Um, he doesn't anoint it. If we were reading Leviticus, we'd hear about anointing of, of things. Um, christening of things, Christing things, but he's not Christing it. He's just pouring out an oil offering. Um, and he calls the name of that place uh, Bethel. Bethel, which means house of God. Uh, but the name of that city was Luz at first. Um, so this is um, this city, Bethel, is, is an important one uh, later on in, in Israelite uh, history, 
or later on in Israelite history. And this is the place when the, the kingdom, so under King Saul and King David and King Solomon, there's one kingdom. Then after that, there's two. Um, and this Bethel is in the northern kingdom of Israel and not in the southern kingdom of Judah. And this city becomes a place of false worship because the kings of Israel don't want those tribes of Israel going to Jerusalem for worship because then they'll maybe want to rejoin the, the king of Judah. And so they set up a place of worship. And what better place, what better place than a place where the Lord showed up? He showed up to one of the patriarchs. This seems like a good spot to set up a place of worship. To Yahweh? Well, mostly. But maybe to Baal and Asherah. Maybe Molech. Why not? It's a place of God. God's house. It doesn't say um, house of Yahweh. It just says house of God. So what does it matter what God it is? That's the logic of the Israelite kings. But this is where it gets its name. And this is where... Um, it first pops up in the Bible. So um, when you see Bethel, if you maybe read Kings or or, or uh, Second Samuel into Kings and Chronicles, uh, that's this is the, this is the place. Then Jacob vowed a vow: um, if Yahweh will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. Um, and this stone that which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And all of that you give me, I shall give a full tenth. I'll, I'll tie the tenth. I'll tenth a tenth to you. I'm really going to give you a tenth of everything. Um, so this is a vow. Um, and this isn't, we might want to read this like as some sort of ultimatum, but it's really God's going to do this, right? The Israel, like, if it, if the Lord lives, I'm going to do this. And it's like, well, the Lord's alive, so you're going to do it, right? So it's the same way. If God's going to be with me and do this stuff, as he said, and he keeps his promises, well, then he's my God. Why wouldn't he be my God? Because he's going to do what he says. He always keeps his promises. Um... And if God will be with me, um, if God will be with me, uh, Imadi, if he stands by my side, stands with me, that's, that's the Hebrew way of talking about standing, being, if from, from our perspective, if someone's going to be with me, they're going to stand by my side. That's what he's saying with God. If God's going to do that as he's promised, and he will, well, then he's my God. He's by our side upon the plain with his good gifts and spirit, as Luther would, um, as Luther puts it in A Mighty Fortress. A uh, very Old Testament language here. He's by our side. He's with us. Uh, so then, let's see here. Uh, oh, we're already in chapter 29. Boy, we're not going to finish that. I'm going to, but we got to keep going. It's too early to stop, so we're going to keep going. Um, um, and Jacob um footed around, journeyed, went on his journey. He walked. That's pretty much what it is. He walked. And he journeyed to the land of the sons of the east. And he looked, he saw a field. And behold, there uh, were three flocks of sheep lying beside it. Uh, because uh, uh, from that well, they watered the flocks. And the stone uh, was great upon the, the mouth of the well and when the all the flocks were gathered uh they would um 
the shepherds, would roll the stone from upon the mouth of the well, and they would water the sheep. And they would return the stone to the mouth of the well. Uh, they'd put it back to its place when they were done. Okay, so this is just sort of describing where Jacob shows up with shepherds. Um, and so he asks them, my brothers, where are you from? And they said, from Haran. We are from Haran. And he said, do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, we know. And he said to them, uh, is it well with him? Is there peace? Is it shalom with him? So shalom is, is peace or wholeness, wellness, um, all-encompassing peace. Um, is everything good? Um, and they said, peace and look Rachel his daughter is coming with the sheep so um, we're just getting set up here um, and he said look it is um, the great part of the day and it is not time to gather uh, the sheep or the, the flock the livestock to be gathered water the sheep and go and pasture them, shepherd them. And they said, we cannot until the flock, all the flocks are gathered and they roll uh, the stone from upon the mouth of the well and water the sheep. Okay, he's arguing. It's a little bit uppity, don't you think? It's a little uppity at Jacob. He doesn't know who these guys are. And he's like, let me tell you how to do your job. Okay. okay, it's a little pushy. Hmm. Um, I mean, it's not that Jacob is unaware of shepherding. I mean, they had flocks of, of goats and sheep and stuff, but I mean, it's still like show up and trying to tell people how to do their job. Um, but he gets interrupted, thankfully, before he puts his foot in his mouth. Um, while he is still speaking, with them, Rachel came with the sheep uh, that were her father's, for she was a shepherdess. So he's trying to uh, look all fancy. Um, now, and it happened, as he saw, as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, but we're really hammering that point home, Jacob approached and he lifted the stone from upon the mouth of the well, and he watered the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. So here, um, this is very, it's very large, and Jacob, he does it all himself. It's odd. Jacob here, the only thing I can I can tie this to is a similar account of a great feat of strength, and it's not Samson. It's actually Peter in the Gospel of John chapter 21. Um, so they have the great catch of fish, 100 and uh, 163 of them, I believe. I could be wrong on the number. doesn't matter. They were large. And Jesus tells them to uh, bring something to eat. And Peter himself goes and pulls this net of fish onto the land. Um, and he is then tasked with um, shepherding. Uh, shepherding the flock. That's what Jesus does after this. And here we can tie this uh, a little bit into this story where Jacob here is is the, the 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 bearer of the promise. He is the son of promise who will eventually the son of promise, the seed will come from. And he is the shepherd of people of God in this ministry of preaching this message. That's all I got. All I'm doing here is I'm not trying to be allegorical or anything. I'm just 
this I'm just saying that this passage has a connection in the New Testament of something similar that happens. And it does involve this preaching of the gospel, this message that goes out to all nations. Peter's tasked with that, and Jacob kind of is too. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. 29.11 uh, Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob uh, announced to Rachel uh, that he is brother of her father. Um, so kinsman is related. And that um, he is the son of Rebekah. And she runs and tells Laban. So she leaves him behind. Here again is another uh, echoed in, in a Peter story. Is when Peter gets out of jail and uh, he sort of gets left behind. He, he gets freed by an angel from jail, goes to the, the house of the other disciples, knocks on the door, and then the servant who recognizes Peter's voice leaves him standing knocking at the door. It's sort of, the, sort of another similar tie-in to Peter here, which would also fit with Peter because Jacob sort of gets it and and also doesn't get it at the same time, which is a very the very same thing about Peter. Peter understands who Jesus is by faith, and then he's also, you know, disown, you know, denies Jesus, um, is brought back into the faith, um, restored by Jesus, and then he's keeps putting his foot in his mouth all the time. It's sort of like Jacob. Jacob and Peter, they'd be like similar, doing similar things. Uh, and it happened when Laban heard uh, the report of Jacob, the son of his sister, and he ran to greet him. And he hugged him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he recounted to Jacob all these things. So he, he tells Laban everything. Um... And uh, not just who he is and where he's from. Um, all these things. All. What things? Uh, basically, probably everything that's happened to this point. Um, all these things that, ha that have happened. Why is he here? Why did he have to leave? Um, what sort of, you know, how is it that um, he was sent. Was he kicked out? No, I was sent with the blessing. What blessing? Well, this blessing, the blessing of Abraham to, to, to me and to my seed, this promised Savior. It all goes together when you start unpacking it. Um, and what does Laban say to him? In me, all families of the earth will be blessed. Um, that is, in my seed. And Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. Um, dwell with me and uh, bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him uh, a month of days, with a, a month. Uh, so here, similar Genesis, earlier Genesis language, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. So here they recognize their kinship with each other. Um We'll keep doing, keep shrugging along here. And Laban said to Jacob, um, because you're my brother, uh, and will you serve me for nothing? Tell me what your, tell me what your wage is. What do you want to be paid? You've been here a month and you're, he's working. So he's, he's doing hard work. And what's he going to be paid? And well, here we go. And Laban had two daughters. The older, the name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. The eyes of Leah were weak, dim, uh, but Rachel was beautiful in form and beautiful in appearance. Um. Yes. So. Um, He's eyeing a marriage, uh, as we'll see here. So there's two. Leah is weak in the eyes. That is, she's unattractive. Uh, but Rachel is beautiful in form and appearance. Okay? 
Um, and Jacob loves Rachel. And he said, I will serve you seven years uh, for Rachel, your daughter, the younger one. Uh, so that's what he's after. He loves her. Um, I guess that could be debated here. Um, but based on further parts of the story that we aren't aware of yet. Well, at least maybe you are, but we haven't read it yet. So we're going to, I'm going to hold off. I refuse to, to try and kill it right now. I'm just, I'm just going to concede defeat that this gnat is not going to, it's not going to, it's going to keep bugging me the rest of the time. Anyway. And Laban said, it is, um, it is good that I give her to you rather, it's better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. Stay by my side. And Jacob served for Rachel seven years, but they were in his eyes like one days, just a few days, on account of his love for her. Um, so time flew because he he loves her. So there is love here. Well, I think we'll we'll see what that means later on as it starts. Well, as the saga, the um, the soap opera of the patriarchs continues it gets it gets pretty bad and i'm gonna maybe i'll leave pastor borkhart holding the bag on that one um and jacob said to laban um give me my wife for my days are fulfilled uh and i will that i may go into her and um so this is the so there's always euphemisms this isn't quite a euphemism it's probably the grossest way that the old testament talks about uh marital inst intimacy um and that's actually important here um so there's all sorts of euphemisms in the scriptures for um for marital intimacy or sex so it, adam knew his wife or Isaac was comforted. Um, those are those are good. Um, those are good. Yeah, you. It is you. It's you. There there are good euphemisms for that. Um, but then there's this, and this lets you know this is not actually a good relationship. So this euphemism is used for David and Bathsheba. Um, and this. Um, this euphemism continues for Jacob when it comes to um, his relationship with Rachel and to steal a little bit of the story which we know also with Leah and from what takes place in this marital relationship between um, Jacob and Rachel and Leah and oh their two servants it's not good it's not good and it's why um, it's why that, um, why this gross, gross, it's gross. And, and we should, we don't want to shy away from it. Um, the, uh, what's funny is the, there's a Hebrew study Bible I read, or the Jewish study Bible, I read that just to see what they did with it. And it, um, it was that I may like cohabit with her. Like, that's totally not what it is. Um, it's gross. It's gross. Far removed from... Um, far removed from the beauty of the marriage that God created for Adam and Eve. that And, and marriage that he wants for, for all of uh, those who get joined in marriage. This lets us know how, how bad it is. How sinful we are. And how gross we make things. But in spite of that, it's not about that. So here we see how much this blessing of all families can't be coming from Jacob. It can't be coming from Jacob. 
It's got to be from his seed, from Jesus. He's our righteousness. He's the one who, who sets us in proper relation with not only with himself and with his father, but creates for us um, healthy and, and gift-filled relationships with each other. Faith toward God first, then fervent. Fervent is, a, is another word for sincere, actual love for one another. And the love described here between Jacob is probably more so what we would describe as lust rather than love. And we were kind of confronted with the grossness that we have in the um, as sinners that we do with the sixth commandment. But it's not about Jacob as bridegroom or Rachel as bride. It's about Christ the bridegroom and his bride the church, uh, that he might sanctify her and make her holy, spotless with his blood. That's you and me because of Jesus. That's what it's about. Jacob, when he's doing things like this, he's not a very good type for the coming Christ. He's sort of a negative type. So, you know, the one who acts towards his bride this way, that's not good. That's not how Christ asks, acts toward his bride, the church. No, she would be holy, and she is holy. You are holy because of him, his blood, his baptism, his word, his body and blood for you. Um, that's what it's about. And so when Jacob is faithful, he's not really faithful all that much, then he is a type of, of the coming Christ, of the coming seed. Here he's not. He's a negative type. Just like David is a man after God's own heart, there he is a type of, of the coming Christ, the king, the true king. There's Jesus. And when David is with Bathsheba, well, he's a negative again, a negative type of the coming Christ. Christ would never do that to his bride, the church. He saves her. He saves you and me. And that's what this story is all about. Jesus and how the family of Jesus, how Jesus comes about. This is These are his ancestors. But it's in him, in Jesus, that all families of the earth, you and me, are blessed, are saved. And J uh, Lestico's right. If Jacob's saved, we have hope. Because our eyes are on Jesus, not on Jacob. So, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I will be back Monday. I don't know as, I don't know if Bible study is continuing um, in during the, the virtual conference or not. I can't remember. I can't remember many things these days. But anyway, with that, I hope this was helpful and we'll pick up the the saga of Jacob uh, on Monday, or maybe you'll get that one of the next couple days with Pastor Borkhart. Either way, it's going to be gift. And I hope that this was a gift and this, the virtual conference uh, over the next couple days will certainly be a gift to you. Worship, um, Bible teaching, um, and even a panel discussion tomorrow with all sorts of questions where uh, Pastor Borg, at least Pastor Borgard and I will be put through our paces. So watch, stay tuned for that. And with that, the Lord bless you the rest of your day.